We're going to Spain tonight. Porto de Indias Gin from Spain. Let's go. Welcome back to Gin Reviews from South Florida. Tonight, we're gonna go back to Spain and I picked out this little bastardly beauty or beautifully bastard gin from Porto de Indias in Spain which translates to the port of India. <laughs> it's in Seville. The distillery is one of the oldest in the world. Uh, Greenall's is the oldest continuously running, but this one uh, gives them a run for their money. Villian Gin Premium, the black edition. They have five different gins. Most of them are flavored. They have a strawberry and the fame. They are the ones that came out with the first modern strawberry pink gin. Uh, but they also have strawberry, blackberry, classic, <laughs> black, and then they have orange and peach blossom. We're coming in at 40% here. This is one of those bottles that you cannot see through. It's completely black. There's good and bad with that. The good, obviously, is no light's gonna get in here to damage the gin, but the bad is you never really can tell how much you have in there. And I've had that come up a few times where I'm thinking, oh, I know I have a couple shots left, like Bulldog or one of the other black ones, the 50 pound gin. And there's not, maybe, a, there might, might be a half a shot left, so. <laughs> I mean, that's a, it's not really a negative, but in my eyes, it kind of is. So, uh, here's the bottle. This is a really nice bottle. Kind of looks like it's very nautical looking, doesn't it? It's got, well, it has ships right there, and the design around the bottle, it, it's really cool. I mean, I, I like this one a lot. It looks really good, especially on a gin shelf. Very sturdy, well-made bottle here. It's not bad. It's not great, but <laughs> it's it's a little thin on the caliber, but it's still a really nice bottle. I appreciate that. The only thing I don't appreciate is that this is a screw top right here. And, you know, I mean, cork is just so much more fun. Why don't we open this bastard, this black bastard up, and see what we get into? Oh, there's no popping, but. Appearance, very clean, hardly any legs, there's some though, a little bit, but not as viscous as a few gins that we've done before. <laughs> Botanicals, juniper, of course, orange blossom, lemon, vanilla, and jasmine. Now, I do hear there's a few more botanicals, but again, this is one of those distilleries that th they don't want to disclose their botanical list for some reason. So those are the few that I was able to find, but just so you know. There is juniper in it, not a lot, but I smell vanilla and orange, like right away. Those are the two main components of the smell. And then there's the underlying juniper. It's very floral. There's a lot of floral notes going on here. Mm. You know, the more it's sitting out and aerating, the vanilla notes are just really, really picking up. I mean, it's almost like slicing into a Madagascar uh, vanilla bean. The base spirit on this is molasses. The first one that I'm seeing, like more of a rum kind of base. Molasses is definitely a rum base. So I think I think the idea really is, like I was saying, that nautical. When you think about rum, you think right away, I think Caribbean. And, and that's kind of what I'm getting with this. Hmm. All right, well, there's just only one more thing to do. Oh yeah, 
it's a good burn. It's a slow traveler. It's not too strong. That vanilla is really intense and it's very nice. This is definitely a sipping neat gin, um, I'm, which I'm glad to to uh, have on the channel here because not too many of the gins that we do, I mean, there are some, don't get me wrong, but not many of them are just for neat drinking, and this one is definitely, you know, like just if you put it in a shot glass and have yourself a nice sip. Ooh, that burn is still, it's still traveling nice. Um, on the back end, I'm getting that floral again, and the juniper is there, but it's kind of like being mixed in. There's almost like this orris root, uh, phantom orris root, or maybe that's one of the botanicals they're not saying here. Because I do have that earthiness on it as well. Um, really nice gin. Really, really nice, easy sipping. You know, not, not crazy strong on the alcohol. And very interesting. Uh, I haven't seen this gin anywhere, really, uh, besides the place where I picked it up. Um, and that was the reason why I got it, was because... I, you know, I love to grab gins that I've never seen or never had, and uh, but apparently this is well known and it's uh, very well uh, appreciated in the gin community. All right, we're gonna do our standard, the old G and T. So I wrote over this guy. You know I like a heavy pour, so well since we are back in Spain tonight. We have to do what the Spanish do. And this is how they do. All right, so we're gonna add a beautiful pork roll, the Indus gin, juniper. We got some tonic right here. It's uh, meat, cheddar, long rice. You know, I'm excited to see how this vanilla interacts with the quinine and then the citrus eventually. Ah, so good, <laughs> you bastards. Mm. Right away, that vanilla, it's almost like, <laughs> like a vanilla gin, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't go too far off of that to describe this gin to anyone. It's definitely uh, very floral um, on that end, and it has it has a lot of like good things for it. I think though, let's see how it is with the citrus. But that neat shot, the first shot that we did, that was really nice on its own. I think the citrus might amplify this a little bit. I'm hoping. Hmm. Well, I went all out tonight and got some nice pink grapefruit here, and I uh, expressed all the rinds to get all those nice oils out into the drink. I love that. There's some orange. Yeah. We have a little lemon. And, of course, the old Persian beauty right here. The lime guy. Gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful bulb of gin right here is about to be enjoyed. Let's see what happens. This is a really nice GNT gin. So it's really good neat, and it's really good with the tonic, citrus. Um, so the vanilla is now, it's muted, and the citrus is actually bringing up the liveliness of the spirit itself. That rum base I was talking about with the molasses, I think that has something to do with it because I'm tasting more of like a, um, like a molasses, yeah, it's more, it's like the molasses is actually coming out more, almost like a rum, but not as strong. <laughs> Mouthfeel, it's refreshing and cool and 
tropical. It has like a dryish, dry kind of effect to it. I would assume this is really good in a martini as well since it has that really nice drying property that gins have. Mmm. Yeah, this is for sure a modern gin. Uh, with the vanilla, that note is still there and it's very proud. It's up front. Um, so if you're a traditionalist, if you are someone who just is a martini drinker or you just like Bombay Sapphire, all the other ones, you know, if you like Tanqueray or Beef Eaters, you might not, you might not enjoy this gin. Now, if you're more of an adventurous type, like I am, you will definitely dive into this head first and no regrets, I'm telling you. Mm. It's very good. It's very good. I haven't had a gin from Spain yet that isn't as good as this. I mean, this is right up there. It's right up there with the millions of Spanish gins. <laughs> um, well, hmm. I'm gonna enjoy the hell out of this thing while you guys make your own. Or hopefully you're drinking one with me right now. That's the dream. That's why I drink. Um, anyway. <laughs> So, uh, from me to you, to you to me, everyone else in the middle, from sea to shining sea, I wish you guys a good night, a good day, a good afternoon. Go out and buy this. Price point on it was $26. I saw a little less online. So go out and buy it. You see it, get it. Enjoy it with me. Tell me what you think, all right? All right, until the next one, salute, eh? You bet. So I'm letting everyone in here see what happens after I do a review and usually what I do is this I make a martini out of said gin that we just did and what the deals if you can think I knew I knew and then I try to build on that the next day with a couple cocktails but you have to start with like a master of them all so what I did with this one was half an ounce of dry vermouth um, and then I, I used martini Rossi and then I did uh, two ounces of uh, our gin and then a little bit of orange bitters and then I, I was like a lemon just the oils though and I, I think the old lemon is really good orange is good too but I think lemon's better personally let's see how this gin is right where it should be it's cold ice cold very dry very um oh, oh, the vanilla i'm tasting that vanilla and the citrus it's just like it's taking a hold of the martini it's really nice the vermouth too is bringing like out a lot of that vanilla crispness and the floral notes hibiscus uh, the juniper perhaps with that too See, here's something I, I know now. There isn't forest room in it because the vermouth would bring out that earthy tone, and there's no earthy tone. I'm gonna say that confidently. There's no earth in it. 